Hello and welcome to this video on installing the Linux station and crash plan on a QNAP network attached storage device. So in this video, I will tell you what Linux station is and why you should use it for running crash plan. I'll explain the system requirements for running the Linux station on your QNAP NAS. I'll also show you how to download and install Linux station and then I'll show you how to download and install CrashPlan. And I'll also show you how to locate the files to be backed up on your NAS. So first of all, what is Linux Station? Linux Station is your fully functioning Linux machine on your QNAP NAS. Without Linux Station, you would have to download the Crash Plan app onto your NAS and then you would have to download Crash Plan onto a separate computer and configure that separate computer to administer your Crash Plan backups. And in the past I've, I've found this quite fiddly and I've never found it particularly reliable which is a shame because Crash Plan is actually a very good product and a very good service. So the Linux station lets you install a month crash plan as you would on a Windows or a Mac computer. So what are the system requirements for running the Linux station? Well first of all you need to have the QTS version 4.2.1 version of the firmware or higher. You also need to have a QNAP NAS with at least 4 GB of RAM. You need to have one of the supported models which includes the TX51, the TS53, the TS53A, the TS70, TS79, TS71, TSECX80 and the TVS82 series. You also need to have Container Station version 1.5.1343 or newer installed and this will be installed automatically at the time of installing Linux Station if you haven't already got it. In this video I use the TVS663 with 8 GB of RAM. So the first thing we need to do is install Linux Station on to our network attached storage device. So I click on to App Center and then I search for Linux Station. And we can see it there. So I click on install and it asks me to choose where I want to store the the actual software itself. So I want to store it on this SSD drive here which I've set up specifically for it. So I'll click on OK and that will now install. And it will actually download two apps. The first app it downloads is Container Station and then it will download Linux Station. So now if we come onto our desktop, we can see we've got Linux Station. So if I double click on that, and we can see here we've got the two Linux, we've got a choice of Linux installations. So I'm going to choose 16.4, because that's the most recent version that's available to us. So I'll click on Install. So Ubuntu has now been installed on our NAS and the best way to access it is to use a USB keyboard and use the HDMI output on your NAS. One thing to remember is that when you're un running Linux Station you won't be able to access HTE Desktop but 
as you've got a fully functioning uh, Linux machine, then there's probably not a lot that you could do on the HD desktop that you can't do using the Linux machine. So like I said, the best way to access it is using the HDMI output. But because I'm using screen recording software, I'm going to access it using the remote desktop. So the first thing it does is ask me for a password. And this is the password that you use to log on to your NAS. So we can see here that we've got the Ubuntu desktop. And I can access all of the files stored on my NAS by clicking on this little NAS shortcut. So these are all my NAS shares. So if I click into documents, here I can see all of the files which are on my network storage device. And I can also open them because we've got the Libra Office on here. So if I double click on here, and we can see now we've got uh, a Microsoft Word document in LibreOffice. So to install CrashPlan, we double click on Google Chrome and type in CrashPlan. Then we click on download. So the crash plan file is now installed. So if I double click on that, and then I click on crash plan install, and click on extract, and then extract again, and we'll click on show the files. So we can see now we've got a file called crash plan install in our downloads folder. So what we need to do is we need to go into terminal. So to do that, I click on search your computer. And we can see here I've, I've actually got terminal listed. If I hadn't, I could just type in terminal. So now I type ls to do a directory listing. And we want to be in the downloads folder. So if I do cd, capital D, this is important, it's A sensitive, enter, then I do ls to get a directory listing, and I want cd crash plan hyphen install, enter, to ls, and we've got the install file. So to run that, I do dot slash install dot sh, enter. And I don't want to install as root, everything I need to access is accessible via admin. So we say yes. Enter. So we say yes. So now we can see that we've successfully installed Crash Plan. So I've now set up my first backup job on my network attached storage device. And it actually ran successfully for the first time last night. But I thought I'd just show you where the files are located as it isn't ab actually obvious. So if I click on change, and what you need to look for is the folder share to and your data is stored in these hash dev file folders and these actually represent each volume on your NAS. So if I click on the little expansion arrow I can see now the names of my shares on my NAS 
and if I click again, I can see the individual folders. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more, then why not subscribe? You can also visit our Facebook page or download a copy of the show notes from www.hidehat.org.uk